I'm Contact 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski. In the next half hour, I'm sharing one of the most important and heartbreaking stories I've ever covered. The story of Ty Tesserero, a 10-year-old boy killed at the hands of his own father, and the system his family says failed to protect him. Anthony Tesserero had no business being in the same room as his son Ty. He was a terror to his ex-wife and anyone he saw as a threat. In short, he was a walking billboard advertising dangerous, erratic behavior. Despite countless court appearances and allegations, Tesserero was given one final weekend to spend with his son before relinquishing custody. Then he took out a gun, shot his son, and then himself. But this tragedy didn't happen spur of the moment. This was months, maybe even years in the making. This is the tragic, heartbreaking story of Ty Tesserero, a 10-year-old Lone Tree boy murdered by his dad, his mom who did everything she could to save her son, and a system that failed to protect an innocent boy. That where you live. He knows where I live? Yeah. And Papa wants you to tell me that? He says you're only going to be safe in the real Hawaii. In the real Hawaii, huh? Uh-huh. OK. Well, this is a story about control, online harassment, and a 10-year-old boy caught in the middle. Did they protect your son? No. A fatal encounter the boy's mother says could have been prevented. There was so many agencies were involved, so many. I begged, talked to, can try to convince everybody to, to do something. Let's go back to early Saturday morning, September 21st. Jing Tessarero wakes up to a chilling email in her inbox. The author, her ex-husband, Anthony, telling her by the time you finish reading this, Ty will be moments away from joining me in the afterlife. It's pretty much like suicide note. And he said he was going to take my son with him. And I called 911. Jing got in the car and drove to her ex's Lone Tree apartment. I just kept waiting for ambulance. And I was hoping there was going to be an ambulance. But no ambulance would show up. And he said they both were dead in the house. <laughs> her ex-husband shot her son, Ty and then turned the gun on himself. Heartbroken. <laughs> I don't know, I don't even know the words. What else? I'm feeling angry, upset, um, regrets, and... <laughs> Less than 24 hours before. We had an awful hearing at the family court. I was going to get custody of my son. But somehow Ty still goes home with his dad. Did you want your son to go with his dad that night? No. No, we even told the judge more than once that we were worried. We were concerned for Ty's safety. She did anticipate an order being issued over the weekend for Ty to be removed. Within eight hours, Ty was murdered. Caroline Cooley is Jing's attorney. Her firm specializes in complicated family law, but she says this case is different. In 20 years, I have never had a case that where a child has been so systematically, methodically, consistently alienated, and no change is occurring, and no systems responding to it. To understand what Jing's ex did, they played audio recordings in court. You know, he doesn't want to be with you. Yeah. He hates you. AJ, can you just let me talk to my son? No, no I cannot. Go get a police officer. Come on. No. She says this happened almost every time Jing tried to pick up Ty for her court-ordered parenting time. Like it matters if she mad. She lied to us, Ty. Come you on. know what piece of crap she is. Yeah, no, she's hi. lying to you. Ty, can you just she's listen lying. to Mama for you a minute? You know how she lies. She's gonna grab you. Come on. No. Ty was just his tool, and Ty is just being used. Jing's ex also had a mandatory protection order to stay away from her. How many times did he violate that protection order? I can't count. I, my opinion, there was so many, so many. There's, yeah. And what did police, what did the court system, what did DHS do? Nothing. Nobody did anything. An order that also should have kept him from having a gun. But the abuse doesn't stop there. Anthony took his threats online, where he used open sites like cheaterreport.com to destroy Jing and her new husband's reputation. The online post never stopped, never stopped. It would ongoing till last weekend. The same website where he would post his suicide note, his final message of control, a message Jing says he never should have been able to write. He lost and he had to take time with him he, because that's the only thing he could control and that night was Ty. What do you want done? I want there to be a formal investigation. 
I would like the governor to get involved. This is not right. Something needs to be done. You know, the kids shouldn't be. Kid knows. They know. Douglas County's Human Services Department says the entire community is grieving. State law prevents them from releasing details about child welfare matters. But we are told the state is conducting a review of what happened, and those findings will be made public. And while there's no doubt who murdered Ty, there are plenty of questions about why this little boy was ever in harm's way. Governor Polis tells Denver 7 he is closely monitoring the state investigation and whether the court system failed to see the warning signs. The family is asking for an independent investigation, but so far Governor Polis has stopped short of that. So with hundreds of pages of court documents, email after email, where police, prosecutors, DHS were asked to do something, why did no one intervene? Why did no one listen to the pleas for help until it was too late? She's not your mother, Ty. She's a piece of crap. Remember how she cheated on Papa and how she lied? Mom, yeah. Yeah, Mom, remember that forever. Cheated on Papa. The audio recordings tell the real story of the abuse. A controlling ex-husband who brainwashed his son, Ty, and refused to let his mom pick him up for her court-ordered parenting time. AJ, can you stop talking? No, I can't, because you're a piece of shit. Talking bad about me in front of Despite the mandatory protection order she had against her ex, Anthony, which should have prevented this, Jing Tessarero says the emotional and psychological abuse never ended. His threats, he's using Ty, threatened me since the very beginning, since the very first day I wanted to be out of his control. He even took those threats online where he destroyed her and her new husband's reputation and anyone else who got in his way. He was going to Google for everything and any professional that was involved was being threatened and I think they didn't want to deal with him. New emails going all the way back to May of 2018 show Jing's attorney Caroline Cooley alerted police and the court system that Anthony has been wrongfully keeping the minor child for the last 56 days. She demanded a criminal investigation for violating his protection order, noting there has been an ongoing pattern of mental abuse by father with the minor child. I requested Department of Human Services multiple times to reopen the case to assume jurisdiction, my requests were rejected. In August, it continues. So Jing's attorney reaches out to Douglas County Human Services directly, writing, we have at least three police reports and now a DHS call in the last 75 days. And nobody wanted to investigate. We talked to the police. We tried to file a police report because it was, we couldn't prove that's him. It would take 15 months before Jing would finally get her day in court, a day when the judge finally saw her ex for who he really was, the last day Jing would see Ty alive. Ty should have been moved from father's custody and put into mother's custody 15 months ago. We requested it. Our request was denied. The judge planned to give Jing custody, but took the weekend to write her order, letting Ty go home with his dad. Less than 24 hours after the custody hearing, Anthony shot his son and then turned the gun on himself. That kid went through so much. <laughs> He tried so hard just to not make things worse for me. Much more on this heartbreaking investigation after the break.